So sometimes you get handed a really challenging circuit, something along these lines. And this is my only video lecture on this. There are times there's kind of just different kinds of analysis you can make here. You know, one of which is you could just say, well, what is the resistance of all this network if all these voltage sources were, were basically turned off? And you can kind of look at that. It, has, it actually has a nice result, which we'll kind of talk about at the end of this again. But the question might be is, well, imagine I want to actually understand for all these different five voltages here, or maybe in more practical terms, I could keep making this ladder circuit, which can, has this kind of repeating pattern, R to R pattern, and say, hmm, what would that output voltage look like as a function of the input voltages? Fair question. And then you look at the circuit and you go, this is a little bit crazy. But let's just try to work through it and see what happens. What you start off with is I've got some resistors here and a voltage source. And I know that I can take a Norton Thevenin equivalent of this, you know, just kind of looking at this, looking at this piece here and going, I wonder what would happen. And I probably want to try to do these kind of pieces of the analysis. Because I could imagine this could be, I could take a Norton version of the circuit. I have two R's here that I combine into a single R. That probably helps me propagate this. So there's a couple different ways to ask these circuit questions. A different way to approach that same thing, because I could take what I just said and then keep doing Thevenin and Norton equivalents all the way down the chain and solve it, and it's actually a really good approach to kind of going through this. But let me take a different approach, kind of combining this and saying, I could talk about superposition, which means I could say, let me turn this voltage source on all by itself, leave these all at zero, and then turn this one on, leave them all, the others at zero, and so on. I can simply just add the results when I'm done. Remember, this is a linear system. This is allowed. And so many things that we do in linear circuits are, are going to be using the superposition property. Okay. Superposition is just a natural part of any linear system I'm going to build, whether it's talking about circuits or talking about quantum mechanics. Same concepts will show up. Same meaning. Okay. So, imagine I'm going to just have this voltage on, and all the rest of them are off. Well, one thing I remember from doing this kind of an analysis is that if these were all off, all of these resistors, this R, 2R, 2R, all this whole chain, ends up effectively, basically, sort of simplifying down to basically being 2R. All of this from over here over turns out to be R, and I get another R here, so it's 2R. So my entire circuit is this 2R and this R in V1. This also illustrates what you're going to do for the Thevenin and Norton equivalent, because I can then make this into its Thevenin and equivalent. Thevenin to Norton equivalent because it gives me the current source. I have the two R's. They combine in parallel and give me a single R. And then I can just transform this back, and I get V1 over 2, and I get an R there. And you think, okay, this is kind of cool. I can do a lot with this. So you think, okay, maybe I'll get the brave, I'll get brave enough to try the next one. Well, I can do the same thing for V2 and turning off everybody else. Well, again, from here back is all going to just be an R. So that added with another R gives me 2R. So I've got 2R and 2R and V2. But on top of that, I still have this R and this 2R. So how to approach it? Well, I can still, I know what this is all going to be now, because I've solved this problem. And see, what's so important is you have to be able to understand that once I've solved a problem, I don't need to solve it again. Okay, because it's basically going to give me something that looks like this, but now with V2. It's going to give you V2 with an R, another R, and a 2R. Well, I would recognize that this looks like a resistive voltage divider. Ah, so this works out well. So what I'm going to realize is that I'm going to actually going to, that my voltage source is going to be half that, but my output resistance will still, that sort of resistance value is still going to be these two R in parallel with that two R. This gives me an R. So I get V2 over 4. And you think, hmm, this is interesting. I can repeat the same thing for V3. This one on and the other four off, and what I'm going to get is it's going to be over 8. I can do the, then turn this one on, and I find it's over 16. This one is over 32. I find that as I keep working my way backwards, 2, 4, 8, 
16, 32. If this was 8, I would keep going to 64, and then 128, 256. Why is this relevant? Well, imagine I want to build a DAC, which is a digital analog converter. And I have five inputs, so it's going to be a five-bit DAC. And I'm going to have these digital inputs from the most significant bit, V1, to the least significant bit, V5. So how is this going to work? Well, this is going to always be twice as big as this one, twice as big as this one, as big as this one, as big as this one. So I want to keep having, creating a whole bunch of voltages that are half the size at every stage. And then by simply put, putting in particular input voltages or selecting voltages, I can get exactly this behavior. And you know, most of us are probably very familiar with the, the need to have digital analog structures and also to be able to use digital structures to control analog things. So we're very used to that this is an important aspect, but we probably didn't, if you're just doing basic resistor circuits, you probably didn't realize you were this close to getting at least a basic idea of what might be happening in some of these circuits. And many of these concepts are really fairly straightforward in the end.